What's going on, church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So, when you are obedient to God's instructions, it's impossible for your life not to be blessed. Because when you're doing the will of God, he will call stuff to work in your favor. Stuff that should have went against you, God will turn it around so that it work for your good. This happens when we become obedient to God's instructions. When we don't complain about what God wants us to do and just do it. Because most of the time complaining is what keep us from getting stuff done. And that's what keeps us in a place of lack. You never went to a job, not work, and expect to get paid. But if you do work at a job and you don't work, eventually the manager's going to find out. And you could potentially lose your job. And then you lose that resource altogether. See, when God give us instructions, when he command us to do stuff that's pertaining to his will, it's up to us to use the strength that the Heavenly Father has provided for us and get the job done. We got to be about our Father's business. And that's how our lives become blessed. So I was reading in Deuteronomy 8, right? And I got to a part when God was giving Moses instructions. And he was telling him to let the people know to not forget about him when the Lord thy God give the children of Israel the land that he had promised. He said, don't go worship other gods and don't forget about the stuff that he has delivered them out of. Because he was just basically saying a lot of times when people become blessed, they forget to do what God called them to do. They forget to be obedient to his instructions and do the will of God. They forget the precepts. They forget the statutes. And they start worshiping other stuff other than God. They start idolizing stuff. They lose sense of self. They get off the path of righteousness to walk the wild way that leads to destruction. And God went on to say, after he told Moses to let the people know what he was saying in Deuteronomy 8 verse 20, as the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. See, if we hope to receive a blessed life from the Heavenly Father, we have to be obedient to his voice. Because it is his voice that's going to guide us through the wilderness. It is his voice that's going to bless us with discernment. To let us know what's good and what's evil. To be able to judge between good and evil. When we be sure to hearken to the voice of God, that's how our lives change. And when we don't complain about what God wants us to do. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Because this is pleasing to the Heavenly Father. This is letting the Heavenly Father know that we're grateful for the stuff he delivered us out of. We're grateful to receive the best outcome in a situation when it could have been worse. God could have left us in the land of our afflictions. The ones who cause strife to be in our lives. Turmoil. Distress. Causing us to be oppressed and depressed. God didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway because he's a man of war. He fought our battles. He wanted to provide us a better life. We have the opportunity, even more so now because of Lord Jesus. See, the children of Israel didn't have Lord Jesus. So it was a lot of stuff they couldn't be forgiven for. But because of Lord Jesus, we get to be forgiven. And in return, receive a blessed life. See, one of the secret weapons that the enemy uses against us is to try to cause us to lean toward our own understanding once we start to see moments of victory. Whenever we start to win just a little bit, we slowly start to forget about God. And the reason why the enemy wants us to lean toward our own understanding 
is because he don't want us to listen to the voice of God. So you got to understand the reason why you're able to enter into a better life because of the results of listening to God. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, let your will be done, not mine. What do you want me to do next? I refuse to lean toward my own understanding. Dear Heavenly Father, orchestrate my footsteps. And the word also say, God shall direct your path when you acknowledge him in all your ways. So if you understand that God is leading you to a better day, you don't have to lean toward your own understanding. You don't have to try to take matters into your own hands because God is in control. When you leave your life in God's hands, he's in control. He has the will. He's going to get you to a better destination, a better life. See, the enemy wants us to be trapped in a snare of sin. He don't want us to experience the abundance of God and how the enemy trick us out of our positioning is he will place something that you desire in these traps. And when you go after what's easy, that's how you fall into the trap. That's just like that example I was saying when an animal see food in a trap and usually the animal will have to search and hunt to find food. But on this particular day, it sees this easy food, this easy target in this trap. But the animal don't know it's a trap. So the moment they go for it, guess what? They're caught up in the snare. So that's how the enemy destroys us people. When he tries to give you something easy, you don't have to put in this work. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. I could just give it to you. And guess what? A lot of times what comes easy destroy us later on. This is the honest truth. When you try to take those shortcuts, you're missing out on valuable information that's going to help you maintain what God wants you to receive once you get to the destination. See, that's what happens when you travel the wild way that leads to destruction. Everything is given easy. It's easy to talk about stuff that's going on in, in the world. It's easy to gossip. It's easy to complain. But when you put in that time and effort, when you be sure to hearken to the voice of God, when you be obedient to his instructions, when you don't take shortcuts and you remain on the critical path, you're going to be more equipped to handle whatever challenge that may come your way once you get to the destination because you didn't try to bypass the stuff that you must go through. See, the stuff we go through is called character development. So when God move you to this new season, or should I say new chapter, your character will be evolved. You will undergo a development. You may even be taking on a new role that the Heavenly Father wants you to have. But this happens when we listen to the voice of God. And once we get to that place that God wants us to be at, don't forget about him. See, the enemy want to cause Pride in people's heart once they start receiving this blessed life. And the pride is to keep them from acknowledging God, remembering where their help comes from. And sometimes that's what causes us to worry about our lives because we slowly start to forget. We start taking on too much responsibility when the Heavenly Father is saying, leave it in his hands. I got you this far. Because you believed in me, you trusted me, you loved me. So why wouldn't I keep on getting you even further in life if you continue to do those things that got you in this place? God wants you to have a good life, a prosperous life, an abundant life. Because this is all attached to the character of God. There is no lack in God. When God can see himself in your heart, he will make a way for himself. So he's going to make a way for you. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, it say, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that give thee power to get wealth, 
that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. God said, remember his statutes. Remember who provided grace upon your life. And that's Lord Jesus Christ. Remember who gave you the opportunity to be forgiven for all sins. Remember who gave you the power to receive what you have now. Remember the stuff that you used to pray for back then. Now you have it today. That's amazing. Remember that all of this became possible through Lord Jesus Christ. So the same way God established that covenant with the children of Israel is the same way God has provided us a new covenant through Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why it's so important to listen to the instructions of God because he has provided a way for us through Lord Jesus. And guess what? That's the way that leads to a blessed life. That's how we receive blessings, y'all. The greatest gift we can ever receive is everlasting life. That's the best thing we can ever receive. And the second best gift that we can ever receive is the wisdom of God. Because that's how we learn from our mistakes and remain on the critical path that leads to life. And so that you may have life more abundantly. Moral of the story, don't allow the enemy to trick you out of your positioning due to pride or to receive something easy that's not given by God. Because one thing I learned about the Heavenly Father is this. He don't take us down the easy path. He don't allow us to receive stuff easy with the snap of the finger. God will teach us his ways. And sometimes it can feel frustrating. But at the end of the day, once you make it to the end of that course, you learn something new. See, the only way to really become successful in this life is to literally obtain the wisdom of God. So how do we obtain the wisdom of God? When we allow the Heavenly Father to lead us through the wilderness. That's what happened with the children of Israel. God gave Moses instructions and Moses passed that instruction on to the people. And it was through the wilderness that they learned all this stuff. And that's why the enemy tries so hard to set up these roadblocks. Because he know if you continue down this path, if you continue on this journey, you won't remain the same person as you once was. When you emerge out of this fiery furnace, you will be someone completely different. And that's that character development. Sometimes we got to be tried by the fire in order for the Heavenly Father to remove the impurities so we can fully become who he created us to be. When, when they weld in a sword, it's got to be hit with a hammer in order to knock off the mold and all this kind of stuff. And then it got to be brushed against stone to be sharpened. See, it got to be in these hard places. And then it got to be dipped in water. It got to undergo all of this stuff in order to become what it was created to be. That's what God is saying about you today. You might be in undesirable circumstances. You might be in those temporary places of discomfort. But if you don't go through this stuff, how will you become who God created you to be? See, the version of yourself that God created you to be is the version of yourself that will be blessed. The end of your trial and tribulation will result in a blessing when you be obedient to God's instructions. Listen to his voice. What is he telling you today? What is he telling you to let go of? You may have even had confirmations that reminded you it's time to let this go. It's time to turn a new leaf. It's time to become more consistent. It's time to be more disciplined. Has God been reminding you of that recently? If he has, it's because he got something waiting for you if you don't run away from the spirit, if you don't run away from the critical path, even when it's getting hard. 
God got something waiting for you on the other side. That's why Lord Jesus always remind us to endure. He said, endure temptation because he promised to give the crown of life to them that love him. So it won't be easy all the time, but if we endure what we have to go through, God has already made the way for us, for us to step through those new doors of opportunity. So continue to believe in Lord Jesus. Continue to have faith. Continue to love God with all thy heart, mind, and soul and put nothing before him. Because if you keep God first, he's going to fight the enemy that's ahead. He's going to give you the strength to persevere. He's going to give you the momentum also to help you get through that stuff that you struggle with. Because sometimes that's all we need, just that extra push. And we could be moments away from a breakthrough. But you got to believe it. You got to believe all that the Heavenly Father have said. His plan will prevail over the enemy. The enemy just want to try to trick you out of your position. That's all it is, y'all. When we're getting close, especially when stuff is working, we are start to have this transformation take place. That's when the enemy attacks. He only attacks when you're getting close. That's why your life is hard right now. Because you're close to something. Something is about to turn around. You may have been last in the previous season. And that's because, like I said before, God was just saving the best for last in order for you to make a grand entrance. So when you get in position, you will glorify his name. God is going to get glory out of this situation. So keep putting your trust in the Lord thy God. I pray this word bless you in Jesus name. Amen. I love y'all.